What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you. Jimmy Smith, Ryan Moody, our May show. First and foremost, we hope anybody that hears this globally is doing the best they can do. Uh, we are going to refer to the Corey situation. We have to be very gentle with how we speak about this, but we hope that you get the the gist of what we're talking about. So today, everything was just going splendid. Best day ever. <laughs> and then I started getting text messages. Um, it started with CFFC uh, was no longer going to be on. It advanced to BKFC that Fight TV gave away so graciously yesterday has been moved to a date in June. And then we're slowly learning that they're going to have empty venues this weekend in Brazil. So, Jimmy, I guess the first thing I would I would ask you is, have you ever seen anything like that before, an empty sports venue? I've never seen an empty sports venue. I called fights without a crowd for – Spike did a show called Fight Master. It's kind of their version of the Ultimate Fighter a little bit, and and I – was in studio for those. We didn't call them. They didn't have commentary. Uh, but I saw people fight in a place with no with no fans, much like the Ultimate Fighter House or something like that. So I've been around fights like that. Never a full venue with no one in it. I've never had that. Because when a small space with no fans is very different than a large space with no fans. And from what I understand, in Brazil, it's going to be the same venue, just no one's going to be in it, which is totally different. I believe Joe Riggs was in Fight Master, wasn't he? He was. He won it. And then never fought in Bellator. That That's you a know, resounding success. We, yes. Uh, but, no, no, no. No, no that, that is Bellator in a nutshell. They could have. <laughs> <laughs> Someone won the actual contest and never fought in Bellator. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is just what, I mean, Bellator does Bellator like no one else can. Um, so a I UFC say, guy, basically, <laughs> a, a veteran UFC fighter who already had a name. It didn't launch a new name. Everybody knows who Joe Diesel Riggs is. He won the tournament in a Bellator fight. I think it was Mike Bronzoulis he beat. And then he never actually fought in Bellator. Yeah, it was crazy. And, and you wonder why Scott Coker has no hair. <laughs> that was that was pre-Scott, yeah. Oh, that, was that, that Bjorn? Yeah. yeah, that was pre-Scott, yeah. Oh. Well, Trust even me. better in a way. There's yeah, a guy. He at least washes it. Yeah, and there, you know, the War Machine situation was pre-Scott. So Scott inherited War Machine, and War Machine, you know, almost killed Christy Mack and went to prison. But, like, Scott could say, I didn't sign that guy. They, they cut him immediately. Scott cut him immediately. Immediately. So, yeah, he inherited some problems he had to deal with. I can't say anything about War Machine at all. He is, uh, he's where he needs to be. Let's put it that yeah, way. He, no, he's where he deserves to be for sure. If there's anyone that actually follows like folklore MMA, like what he did to her and what he did to others, this guy is, is a world champion, horrible person. Like in the, in the, in the bad piece, like in the bad person hall of fame, like he has his own wing. Like this guy, just world class, worst person you would be around. I never heard that. anything good about him pre Bellator. Yeah, yeah, yeah I never. Mm -hmm. I literally, and obviously, you know, I'd heard. You know, he trained people I knew. It's a small world, and I, I hadn't, heard, I hadn't heard one good story about that guy. They were all like these stories where you just, are you kidding me? And like, no, yeah, 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 you know, he did that. He did that all the time. I must I'm, have heard half a dozen stories like that. Without saying anything other than yes or no, do you know about the story in Mexico? I, I don't know which story because I've heard stories of what he did. I don't know if he was in Mexico at the time. We're going to have so, to do this. Possibly. Yeah, possibly. It's going to have to be an off air conversation. So anyway, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Down the rabbit hole we went, but we're going to pull ourselves back out. So he, here's the thing. I, I totally understand and respect athlete, fighter. Safety is paramount to all this. Uh, actually, it's funny. We kind of had some back and forths in the video yesterday where, where people, after we put up the uh, preview, were like, yeah, you know, this event's not going to happen anymore. And it's like, listen, you know, what, what do you want them to do? Okay. Number one, if we're being fair, I'm pretty sure the UFC is more powerful than the Brazilian government. But at the same time, uh, you've got people there. You have to have some sense of normalcy, right? 
And I even saw Kevin Lee today put out some tweets where, you know, he just wants to to get back to normal. Thankfully, the UFC has an incredible you can listen to Joe Rogan if you want to hear him talk about somebody glowingly talk about this place. But the PI is a, a beautiful place. I've had the pleasure of going there. It's a fantastic place. Uh, and honestly, I, I'm hoping from what we've seen, they're going to transition some fights over to there. The elephant in the room, Jimmy, is and someone posted in the video that Tony versus Khabib was in jeopardy. And I quickly responded with that comment could have been stated any time during the past five years. I have a yeah, I have a really hard time, a really hard time thinking that this fight is going to not be done based on. I mean, at this point, it, it's almost a legend and myth in and of itself. We can't have this one go down the drain, can we? We can. Um, You talk about the power of Dana White. He's not more powerful than the health department. He's not. If they decide something's a threat to public health, they can shut it down. Period. End of sentence. Now, will they do a, a fight you know, at the Performance Institute, locked down, sanitized, everything? That would be the the best way to have the fight. The, the, obviously, the, the, the overall, the, the, the I want to say most responsible, but the, the safest thing to do is not have any fight at all. That's the safest thing to do is not have any fight at all. Can they have it in the, in the Performance Institute or in a, in a secure location, completely sanitized, and it is fighters, commissions, and production? That's it. Isolate the fighters completely. No fan interactions, no autographs, no nothing. Hotel would be locked down. And make it as safe as possible. Yes. The problem is if one person gets coronavirus that is connected to this whole thing, it's going to be horrible because it would be it, the consequences would be severe for everybody. But I don't just mean, you know, a black guy on the sport. I mean, you know, morally, if, if coronavirus spread to people because they cornered a fighter and a commissioner got it or something like that, that would be horrible. But nothing to keep in mind from a strictly mercenary point of view, is will they lose money not having a live gate doing this in some secure location? Yes. They won't lose as much money as if they don't have any fight at all, meaning you still have it on pay-per-view. You could still make the pay-per-view dollars. People really want this fight. Uh, you'd at least make some money. And this is going to sound, once again, mercenary, but we have to acknowledge it. For the first time in maybe the history of sports, this one sporting event will have no competition. There aren't any other sports on right now but mixed martial arts. Currently. Meaning nothing's been canceled right now. There's no basketball. There's no NHL. There's nothing. And a lot of people are in their homes with nothing to do. If you think this isn't on the mind of people in MMA, in the UFC, you're crazy. You're crazy. They know it. That right now, Tony Khabib, should it happen in the PI with nobody around, no crowd, everybody tested that they can test, what, whatever protocols they can to make it as safe as possible, and you can't make it 100% safe, you just can't. If we can pull this off, there is no other sporting event to talk about but our sporting event. That's insane, but it's true. So the UFC is incredibly motivated. Bellator, hey, I'm you know same thing. I mean, a fight in Connecticut with no with no fans. There is nothing to talk about on a weekend that would be full of other sports, except that March Madness is gone, dude. Except mixed martial arts. I don't know yeah, how they pass that up. I just don't know how they pass that up. That's it's an unprecedented. I, I, I hate saying opportunity or that I'm being like, 
I'm encouraging something that can risk people's lives. I, I, I get that. I'm just saying from a business standpoint, they have a monopoly on sports. I, I don't see how they pass that up. I just don't. It's funny. I, I thought about that as well because somebody had mentioned, you know, uh, Dana was making very disparaging comments about this uh, as if he was playing it off. And I, I said, look, Dana has people in place that are smarter than him. Dana can put out whatever type of front he wants, but he has people that are extremely smart. And ironically enough, I, I share a very similar thought process that you do of we have to just take at face value what's happening. No one's in control of it, right? No one knows what's going to be the next step. But from a business standpoint, how can we make the most of what the opportunity could be presenting? And I thought to myself, you're wiping the gate away. And I understand, yeah, you still have to try to generate some form of revenue. But what if you just threw this on regular TV and said, listen, hey, here's a fight people have wanted for five years. We're going to give it to you for free. We hope everything goes back to normal. We hope this gives you a sense of normalcy and enjoyment and maybe even a little bit of a break from what's going on. How many lifelong fans do you think they could create if we saw a fantastic fight? Can you imagine the numbers on that, though? Millions of people in their home with no sports competition self-quarantining themselves, even if you're not paranoid about this, you're staying home more than you normally would, right? I went to get a burger this afternoon. Nobody was there. It was just blank. Nobody was in there. So even if you're not quote-unquote self-quarantining or it's not a big deal, you're not going out on a Saturday. You're sitting at home. There's no other sports to watch. The numbers on that would slay. Slay, dude. Not even just being good guys and making fans. I, who wouldn't watch it? I guess if you hate mixed martial arts and it's not your thing, okay. But you have a captive audience that doesn't have anything else to watch in terms of sports. You know? So it, it's, 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 they'll do anything they can to make this happen. They'll do anything they can, in my opinion, in my experience, to, to, to make this happen. They'll never get an opportunity like this again, ever. I guess the other side of this is when we talk about the empty arena, we're going to probably hear corners more than ever before. Obviously, when we talk about Brazil, historically, we've talked about, even with Kevin Lee's breakdown, we, we talked about the crowd and how they can impact a fighter. Do you think this weekend we may see a more pure form of fighting just in the face of it's so limited in a way we've really never seen before, at least on this scale of it's just one corner, another corner, a referee and two fighters. We normally don't have that. Do you think that we could maybe learn a little bit more than we're used to this weekend? Yeah, for sure. I, I don't see the fighters fighting any differently. I really don't. Sure, sure, you know, certain fighters feed off the crowd or whatever. But most, and, and in my personal experience when I was fighting, um, I had tunnel vision. I, I didn't notice anything. Once, once there, There's almost like a, I don't know if you've ever been in a a, a life-threatening situation or a, 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 no, I was never in combat, so I'm going to compare what, you know, I, I was never in the military. But from what I've talked to other military guys, a similar kind of thing where, where, I was so locked in and so zoned that people said, like, oh, I was screaming this or that. I'm like, I didn't hear anything. I, I didn't even notice anything outside of the cage when I was fighting. I, I could have been by myself, you know, as long as my opponent was there. And so I don't see fighters fighting any differently. I do agree with you. We're going to learn a lot about the tactics in corners because one of the things that did jump out when we were doing Fight Master is I could hear the corners perfectly. I mean, they really shout and they're used to like a crowd drowning them out and there was no crowd to drown them out. You heard them perfectly clearly, and it was a big part of the experience was you really did get the details and the game planning and all that stuff because coaches were were so much easier to hear. I don't see I – mean, these guys are professionals. These are professional athletes, so I don't see any real difference. Are you a soccer fan at all? I don't think we ever talked about that. Like Luke Thomas is a big soccer fan. Are you a soccer fan? No, I mean I've went to uh, – what is the Philadelphia Union? 
Yeah, sure. I have no idea. Um, uh, I'm, I could be wrong. I mean, I went to a game. Yeah, I, I, don't know. I am ironically not. enough. I right, went to a there, game there was... only because the PPL stadium is right up the road. It's a beautiful stadium, by the way. And so it's like, hey, you want to go to a game? Yeah, a couple free beers. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go watch any athletic event. So yeah, to your no, point, right? captive audience. Yeah. Um, I went actually to the women's national team game. A little, and they slayed. I think it was Chile or whatever. Anyway, I'm not a soccer fan, but there was something in I, forget, I don't even know what country it was, but there was some big tournament, big, big, big playoff or whatever, and they were punishing a team because their fans had done something terrible, you know, throwing something on the field. I don't know what it was. So this series, this tournament, they played without fans. So it was like these huge clubs in whatever country this was, and they played with nobody in the stands. And they kind of analyzed that for to see what effect fans had on referees because a few times referees didn't have any fans to worry about. And it turns out fans are uh, referees are really influenced by, by the fans. But my point is those players played their asses off. The games weren't statistically any different. It wasn't like, boy, these big stars have, you know, flat games when no one's cheering for them. They're professionals. I, I don't think... Yeah, I mean, the crowd might have a little influence on you if you're, you know, Penny agrees. Um, if you're getting your ass kicked, maybe, and you, and you hear the crowd or something like that. But for the most part, there's this, like, tunnel vision thing that happens. You zoom in on your opponent, what you need to do, and you're a pro. And you go in there and you do what you got to do. So I don't think it's going to affect performances as much as we will. It might affect interactions with the coaches. And I think that might be very enlightening. You really haven't experienced fun until you've went to a game where you don't know the rules and what you're cheering for. You just sit there and play along <laughs> hey, with everyone else. Yeah. Yeah, this was my time to cheer, right? I like I, I, I literally had no clue what was going on, but I, I enjoyed the experience. For that yeah, no, matter, live, I would I, love to actually like I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a soccer fan at all, but I've been through Europe a couple times. And the idea of going to a big game in Madrid or like, you know. Barcelona or any of the big centers of soccer, you know, some big, you know, Rome and some huge, that must be awesome in Brazil. I'd like some Azteca in Mexico or something. That must be a cool experience. Yeah. Yeah. That, I would say that was fitting. I went more for the experience than I did yeah. anything else. Like just, just to say I've went like now I pretty much clipped every major sporting event I could. So I guess lastly, to sum this up, as far as, long-term effects from this we really don't know what's going to happen but let's say you have a couple fighters that have bad performances how much would you be willing to write off all the outside things because we've talked about especially in some of these fights there, there is some some actual ramifications as far as the division do you think as fans maybe even as ufc brass they look at some of these with a little bit of a okay, you know that that happened, but we're not going to give it as much credibility as normal because they had a really weird situation that happened. Do you think this is something that could we could see maybe a little bit of that factor in? If we see a bunch of weird performances, yes, yes. If we see a bunch of weird stuff, then we're like, look, yeah, it was weird with no crowd and traveling. You know, worrying about family members. You know, my mom's 73. Maybe a lot of these people are worried about, you know, their grandparents or parents getting this virus. And, you know, it's 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 difficult. I remember Guy Metzger talking about fighting right after 9-11. And he goes, dude, American fan. It was this is in Pride in Japan. And he goes, the American fighters were just – our heads weren't in it. We We just – we were all over the place mentally. So if there are a lot of weird things going on, I think people could write off the card in general. You know what I mean? Write off the performances. If it's – you know, one fighter has a bad night. That might not be the case. Very well. Well, if you guys have any input, we would love to know your thoughts. I, I think for right now, like I said in the beginning, Jimmy and I are going to hope everybody stays safe. Everybody practices good habits. Everybody doesn't go off and do things chaotic. Let's just get a little bit of normalcy this weekend. Thankfully, we have promotions both in, in Bellator and in the UFC that saw through their events, not anything against the FFC or BKFC. I mean, I think a lot of the pressures that I saw were at the state level where they did all they could do until they could do no more. So hopefully there's a little bit of normalcy. If we don't have fights, I guess, I don't know, Jimmy, what are, what are we going to do? If we don't have fights, maybe you and I could go load up a coal, a couple old pay-per-views and do some breakdowns of UFC 10, right? 
We'll figure out something, man. We'll figure out something. We'll go over some of our classics. Uh, we'll do some top 10 lists. Actually, in the, in, in the comments section, let us know what you think. What should we do if if everything gets canceled? We don't have fights for a couple weeks. Let us know what you want to hear about. With that said, we appreciate you guys checking this out, and we will be back very shortly with more commentary.